friends uh, welcome to lecture number 37 uh, this is a, a continuation to the previous uh, lecture that's on management of salt affected uh, soils so uh, in this we are going to uh, solve some of the examples on uh, salt affected soils and also at the end we are going to see how uh, sodic soils uh, I mean the nature of sodic soils and some example of that. Okay, so, so the here is an e uh, exercise or example. Uh, so, irrigation water salinity is given uh, that is uh, 1 uh, decisemen per meter uh, which is uh, and then applied uh, water depth that is a D in it is a uh, 1176 mm per season and crop water demand ETC is uh, 1000 mm per season. So, assume that the plants extract 40 percent, 30 percent and 20 percent and 10 percent of their water from the upper quarter, second quarter, third quarter and lowest quarter of the root zone respectively. Okay. So, that means suppose you have a plant right you have plant here. So, the top quarter and then middle quarter and then the last quarter. So, these are the four quarters if you see. So, here the top quarter we assume that uh, it extract you know 40 percentage of <coughs> water. So, this is 40 percent right and then uh, this is 30 percent and this is 20 percent this is 10 percent. So, that means <coughs> the roots excuse me the roots uh, is generally it extracts 40 percent from the first quarter and the roots extract 30 percent of moisture from the next quarter and second quarter and third quarter and fourth quarter like that. Okay. So, uh, so, the questions are here the first determine the leachate salinity treating uh, the root zone as a single layer. So, first you uh, consider the whole thing as a single layer the whole root zone as a single layer and find out what is uh, uh, leachate salinity. In the next determine the CPS salinity uh, from each of the four layers and the average salinity of the four layers. Okay, this is taken from uh, Ayers and uh, uh, Westcott uh, 1985. So, in this example the so first you have to find out what is the average uh, salinity level in the root zone and then individual uh, layers root zone uh, layers uh, uh, salinity and then average of these uh, layers. Okay. So, treating the, the first question the first one is to determine the leachate salinity treating the root zone as a single layer. So, if you consider the single layer right the so CPS salinity you know leachate fraction which is equal to I minus E T by I right. So, that means this is what uh, input like irrigation water minus evapotranspiration and divided by irrigation water. So, the values are given. So, irrigation water 1176, so this is given and then uh, evapotranspiration this is uh, 1000 mm per season and divided by irrigation water you get. The, so, leachate fraction is 0 0.15 and then the corresponding uh, the uh, corresponding uh, electrical conductivity of uh, you know drainage water. So, which is equal to so, E C I W irrigation water electrical conductivity and leachate fraction because we know leachate fraction which is equal to E C I W by E C D W right or in a simple term. So, E C I W divided by 2 into E C E W okay. or again uh, there is another term like E C I w divided by 5 into E c uh, E w minus E c I w. So, this is so these are all you know uh, approximation of uh, you, know, you know the formulas for leachate fraction. So, we take this and find out the le leachate fraction in uh, sorry uh, electrical conductivity in drainage water. So, E c I w is given. So, that is uh, 1 decisemen uh, per meter 
and then Lichert fraction you can substitute here and then you get 6.7 decisemen per meter. So, this is if you consider the whole root zone into one layer you get uh, the drainage water I mean so the uh, I mean the electrical conductivity for the drainage was 6.7 decimal per meter. So, let us go to uh, the next uh, you know so the layer by layer if you consider. So, we are going to use the same equation to determine the soil salinity at the bottom of each four quarters of the root zone. So, now we consider you know the four quarters. So, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter and fourth quarter. So, let us say this, this is all uh, root zone. Okay. So, we expect 40 percent of water will be taken by this portion and 30 percent, 20 percent and 10 percent of soil moisture will be extracted at the lower quarter. Okay. So, let us uh, find out leachate fraction for each quarter. So, that is for first quarter L f 1 uh, we use the same equation I minus E t by I. Okay. So, I is 1176 here E t is you know 40 percent is contributing to E t right the out of total. So, if this is E t E t c. So, 40 percent from this. So, 40 uh, of E t like uh, 0.4 times E t divided by 1176 you get so, this is the leachate fraction for the first quarter and then and then the corresponding E c 1 is uh, E c i irrigation water divided by leachate fraction. So, then you get 1.5 dc 7 per meter. Okay. So, now uh, leachate fraction 2 the la next layer if you go. So, uh, so, this 40 percent is over. So, now let us find out. So, when this 40 percent water goes into the next right. So, that means, so what is the 40 percent is gone and the remaining 66 percent right 66 percent. So, this 66 percent is of 1176 right. So, that will give 776 uh, 776 that will give. Okay. So, that means, so you get 1176 multiplied by 0.66 you get 776. Okay. And then uh, the similarly, but but the third quarter, the third quarter will have uh, a second sorry second quarter we have 30 percent so of E T so this is clear and 776 and you get 0.61 and the corresponding E C 2 is E C 1 into L F 2 so E C 1 is this L F 1 is uh, this one okay so then you get 2.5 and similarly L F 3 uh, that means for third quarter. So, 0 0.61 times uh, 776 okay, 0 0.61 times 776 you will be uh, 476 uh, minus this since it is 20 percent of uh, moisture extraction. So, that will be uh, 20 percent is of E T C and you get 0 0.58 and E C 3 will be E C 2 minus L F 3 and you get 4.3. Similarly, for L F 4. So, L F 4 is uh, 476 multiplied by 0 0.58 you get 276 and you get this and then E C 4 is this. Okay. So, uh, in this way for each uh, layer or each quarter you can find out what is the leachate fraction as well as the uh, electrical conductivity. Okay. So, uh, so, to calculate C P S salinity treating the soil as old and the layers uh, it is at 6 point seven uh, this is seven per meter. So, here uh, so in the previously we also got 6.7 uh, this is seven per meter. So, that means it is really matching and the average soil salinity is the average of the irrigation water salinity and the salinity is the bottom of four layers. So, let us see you see average is equal to for each layer uh, the electrical conductivity we collect and then average them. So, the first layer since it is one uh, this is seven per meter. So, that is 1 plus 0 uh, divided by 2 that is the average for that right and similarly for the last one 6.7 right. So, 6.7 plus 0 divided by 2 so that you get this one and the and the uh, this is the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter layers and finally, um, 
you get the average S3.0. Okay. Okay, next. So, here, so Rhodes uh, 1974 uh, recommended the following leaching fraction equation for high frequency sprinkler and trickle irrigations. Okay, so, leaching fraction for sprinkler and trickle irrigation, so leachate fraction is estimated with E c uh, electrical conductivity of irrigation water and 2 multiplied by E c into uh, E c uh, soil equivalent extract soil extract equivalent uh, what you call salinity. And then Hofmeyer and uh, Van Gensten 1983 developed the following theoretical equation for uh, LF. Uh, it has a wider range of salinity parameters for which it is accurate. For example, here so they gave the equation E C E divided by E C I W. So, which is equal to 1 by LF plus delta by Z into L f and L n of L f plus 1 minus L f into exponential minus Z by delta, where Z is the root zone depth and delta is the empirical constant. So, which is given as 0.2 times. Okay. So, here so this is the relative uh, salt tolerance of the crops. If you look at some of the crops both annual crops and forage crops. So, the electrical conductivity which is in deci semen per meter for non saline to saline, uh, slightly saline. So, it is varied from 0 to 4 for moderately uh, saline it is 4 to 8 and severely saline it is 8 to 16. So, uh, annual crops under this category that is uh, non saline to uh, slightly saline. So, soybeans, you know, field beans faba beans and peas and corn. So, all these things uh, all these uh, annual crops uh, falls under uh, non saline to saline dollars. And forest crops uh, red clover, uh, alsaic and uh, trimothy. So, these forest crops uh, you know come under non saline to slightly saline soils. Okay. Similarly, for severity uh, severely soil uh, saline soils uh, barley uh, and then uh, uh, barley may grow, but forages are uh, more productive in severe salinity. Okay. So, and then uh, for forage uh, crops, Altai wild rye grass, uh, Russian wild grass, tall wheat grass, and salt meadow grass. So, these mostly the grass crops are, uh, are I mean, uh, can sustain for uh, severely uh, saline conditions. Okay. And then okay, irrigation depth, uh, irrigation application depth and leaching fraction. So, this is uh, we have talked about earlier, but still. So, if the goal is maintain the salinity within acceptable range during the entire growing season. So, the depth of irrigation water that would be applied uh, during any irrigation event is estimated using this equation. So, suppose you, you Suppose you you know the seasonal values and uh, for each irrigation, so what is irrigation requirement so that you can maintain the salinity throughout the season. So here, hundred by one minus L F into R A W that is readily available water, and uh, this is irrigation efficiency and leachate fraction. So, uh, so knowing these values, you can find out the irrigation requirement uh, for uh, that particular irrigation. Uh, I mean in order to remove the salts. And the next is example, so based on uh, the, the uh, irrigation requirement for a particular irrigation. So, uh, calculate the depth of irrigation water required, so average uh, for the field. So, that is irrigation I r uh, as for the equation. So, for melons based on the previous equation. Okay. So, the MAD is 45 percent that is uh, management allowable deficiency. So, then uh, the irrigation system efficiency is 70 percent. So, the irrigation water E C I W is 1.09 deci semen per meter and total available water is 24 centimeter. So, in this equation, so the given or MAD is given E C I W is given 
T A W is uh, given. So, once you know T A W and MAD you can estimate R A W. Okay. So, uh, then irrigation requirement can be easily estimated. So, the equation L F the literature requirement E C I W by 5 into E C E minus E C I W this is we know the previous equation. So, 1.09 uh, 5 times so this is given 2. Point, uh, uh, so, this one we uh, get it from FAO 56 for uh, maximum salinity in the saturated paste extract okay, for melons okay, for a particular crop melons. So, that is uh, around 2.2 decisimen per meter. So, that one you get and irrigation water you got and finally, the leachate fraction uh, will be 0 0.11. Okay. So, for so remember for finding out leachate fraction you must know the irrigation water electrical conductivity and the uh, I mean uh, the electrical conductivity of uh, uh, soil right. So, that is why so we do not know the electrical conductivity of soil for that particular suitable for the particular crop and we adopted from FAO. So, now, now I r is equal to 100 into I e 1 minus L f into R a w R a w is uh, 45 percentage of T A W okay. and then finally, you get 17 centimeter irrigation requirement. And then uh, yield reduction due to salinity. So, this is estimated with the relative yield that is y r in percentage. So, where y r is uh, E C naught right. So, that is uh, uh, maximum yield uh, when you achieve when there is no salinity and E C E that is soil equivalent uh, electrical conductivity divided by E C E, E C naught minus E C 100. Okay. Now, E C naught is electrical conductive salinity 0 yield okay, when there is uh, yeah. So, when there is a yield is 0 that is uh, E C naught. So, that means, it is extreme uh, E C value and E C E that is E C of the uh, sal soil saturated extract right that is uh, decision per meter again E C 100 that is salinity threshold level above which the crop yield starts to decline. So, so this is the uh, maximum yield you will achieve then after that the plant shows uh, you know the uh, E C uh, decline in E C. Then Y act is actual yield Y P is a potential yield. So, putting these values you get first to find out Y R once you know the Y R and then multiplying with uh, the potential yield you get actual yield. Okay, so, here is an example. So, uh, in a saline area, so E C of wheat field uh, during its growth period was found 7 decisiven per meter. So, this is uh, E C of the uh, during growth period you got and estimate the yield reduction due to salinity. If the wheat cultivar can maintain a potential yield up to 4 decisiven per meter and the yield at uh, E C greater than 22 decisiven per meter is 0. So, here what happens? So, E C 0 is equal to uh, 7 decisiven per meter okay, and E C E 22 E C 100 is 4 decisiven per meter. Okay. So, that means 4 decisiven per meter, 7 decisiven per meter and 22 this is for soil anyway. So, for 4 uh, you expect uh, you know the, the maximum yield. So, yield is maximum here then at 7 then after that yield is, yield is declining and at 7 yield is going to be 0. Okay. So, y, e, y uh, let us say actually equal to 0 here and this is for soil anyway. So, putting the values y r is equal to 100 into E c naught minus E c e E c naught minus E c 100 and you put 22, 27, 22 minus 1. So, 83.33 percent is the relative yield. So, then yield reduction will be 100 minus 83.33 percent and, uh, and that will be 16.67 percent. Okay, so, project planning and salinity. So, how, how to plan if you have a salinity issue in, in the soil? So, first thing is, so irrigation water with saline water 
uh, lower than 450 milligram per liter. So, that uh, when you divide with 640 you get you can convert that into you know DC 7 per meter D s uh, meter. So, that uh, E c I w is equal to 0.7. So, that will be 450 and 640 right. So, if you remember the equation in order to convert the uh, in order to convert uh, the de, uh, electrical conductivity into concentration. So, you need to multiply with uh, 450 okay. So, uh, sorry 640. So, this way you get uh, E C I W 0.7. So, does not present a hazard for irrigation salinity. So, remember if E C I W irrigation water 0.7 D C 7 per meter and it does not uh, I mean this is okay happy to use it is an irrigation it does not show any does not present any hazard for irrigation salinity. So, irrigation water with salinity in excess of 2000 milligram per liter. So, that is equivalent to E C I W 3 uh, present a hazard for many crops. So, most of the crops are sensitive when E C is equal 3 deci seven per meter. And the Rao et al 1994 developed a table that specifies the maximum acceptable salinity of irrigation water as function of rainfall soil type and crop sensitive to salinity. So, let us see the uh, I mean the table here look at this in this table the soil uh, texture is uh, given in this and then uh, these are the annual uh, rainfalls. So, less than uh, 350 mm and 350 to 500 mm 550 to 700 mm. So, these are the annual rainfalls and for for example, for fine uh, texture soil like more than 30 percent of clay. So, sensitive the crops sensitive crops uh, with annual rainfall right. So, can have uh, 1 deci 7 per meter ok. And then uh, semi tolerant crops uh, can grow up to 1.5 deci 7 per meter right and tolerant 2 deci 7 per meter. So, like that so, the maximum acceptable salinity in irrigation water as function of soil type, rainfall and crop sensitive to the salinity uh, can be you know uh, can be known. So, now uh, so next is the sodicity. So, sodicity so salinity we target uh, mostly for uh, you know the, the sodium uh, sorry uh, the salts. So, any salts in the sense so, uh, salts in the sense even the sodium, uh, calcium, you know potassium, magnesium. So, all those salts so combining, but in some places uh, what happens the sodium uh, you know percentage will be more a sodium uh, portion will be more. So, that is uh, we call the sodicity. So, we are targeting the sodium. So, excess sodium what happens it reduces the water availability. So, what here if you see this picture. So, these are the clay uh, you know the particles clay particles so, the sodium since it is the, uh, the clays are negatively charged and sodium is positively charged right. And uh, sodium is like uh, the single valent right one, one positive so, compared to calcium. So, cal calcium will attach you know, strongly compared uh, with the clay particles right uh, compared to sodium particles or sodium molecules you can say. So, that is why in order to uh, I mean show its activity what happened the sodium uh, will have like 6 around uh, I think the 10 so, if you see this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 uh, there is the one more 10. So, these 10 uh, uh, hydration bonds uh, so, this hydration will be created around the sodium mole, I mean uh, molecule ok. So, so what happens so in that case what happened whatever the amount of water which will which will be absorbed uh, here uh, on, uh, to the sodium and uh, and that hydrostatic pressure will be created that will push the clay layers away ok clay layers away. So, are the clay particles away so that is why so, water availability in, uh, in case of sodicity will be less and uh, it leads to breakdown of clay particles. So, it will definitely you know break down the clay structure. So, because when, when, 
the sodium molecules absorb lot of water what happens it bulges and then it pushes the uh, clay bonds uh, away. So, that way the structure is going to uh, dismantle. So, then the clay particles can uh, clog the soil and reduce infiltration rate uh, nearly 0. So, that is another uh, so once it is uh, going away so that is going to clog instead of because the structure is going to disturb the clay particles will easily pass through the you know the pores and clog the pores and then the infiltration capacity of the soil will be reduced. Okay, so, so the next so next is the calcium uh, which is uh, as I said the calcium is attracted which more strongly to the clay particles because it is uh, valence is 2 right uh, because plus 2. So, it, it, it uh, attracts stronger than a sodium if too many sodium molecules with a large shell of hydration force the clay uh, particles apart and break down the soil structure that is what I explained in the previous slide. So, this is the problem if you have uh, uh, sodium. Now, otherwise calcium what happens it, it absorbs or uh, uh, clay particles and your hydration will be less compared to sodium. So, so that is why in case of sodium the a lot of sodium is a problem because it absorbs wa water and disturbs the clay structure. Okay. And then the sodicity is expressed with uh, sodium adsorption ratio. So, that is SAR sodium adsorption ratio the, that is the sodium right uh, divided by calcium plus magnesium by, by 2. So, it is a normality sodium normality and uh, calcium normality and magnesium normality. So, this is uh, the unit is Me q per liter that is milli equivalent per uh, liter. Okay, so, here sodicity, so there is a, a table, so this uh, table clearly sh uh, shows the sodicity of hazard to soil as a function of irrigation water and salinity. So, knowing so, as you got SAR using that equation, now knowing the ECIW right uh, salinity of uh, irrigation water. Now, you can uh, in, in sodic soils you can clearly see whether the particular environment is you know uh, I mean hazardous or not. So, non hazardous condition so SAR values from 0 to 3 and greater than 0 0.7 decibel per meter uh, will be non hazardous. Okay. So, this table is very important the sodium hazard level in function of both SAR and overall salinity. So, that is what this table uh, gives. So, higher salinity in the soil water decreases the osmotic potential okay. and, uh, uh, and uh, water in the soil water solution and uh, such the decreases in amount of water in the hydration cells around the sodium ions in the interlayer between the clay particles. So, higher the salinity in the soil layer decreases the osmotic potential. Okay. So, and uh, because of uh, uh, hydration potential is uh, decreasing, so water available will be very difficult for the plants. So, it may be very det uh, detrimental to irrigate with low salinity water in the field that was previously irrigated with high salinity and the sodicity water. Okay. So, let us go through the example, okay, the next example if you see. Uh, irrigation water has 600 uh, 460 milligram per liter sodium, uh, 40.1 milligram per liter calcium, 24.3 uh, milligram per liter magnesium. If irrigation water salinity is given, then what level of hazard is presented in the sodicity? So, first thing is so the find out uh, what is the milli equivalent of uh, sodium, magnesium, and calcium. So, let us let us do this. So, 460 milligram per liter sodium can be uh, converted into uh, you know the milli equivalent by dividing the sodium 23 milligram per milli equivalent. Okay. The similarly for calcium that is 20.05 milligram per uh, milli equivalent and because if you remember calcium 40 right. 
uh, since it is two valence, so divided by two, okay, so you get twenty point zero five, right? And uh, similarly here, uh, twenty four point three because you got two valence, right? And twenty four point three divided by two, you get twenty twelve point five one five milligram per milli equivalent, and you get two magnesium. And now SAR, uh, which is equal to sodium uh, plus uh, square root of calcium plus magnesium by two, so substitute it, and you get seven SAR. So now if you uh, and then ECIW for the irrigation water is. So, this is in ppm when you convert into deci 7 per meter you have to divide it by 640 you get 2 deci 7 per meter. So, let us go back to the previous table let us see your salinity level 2 deci 7 per meter and the SAR is 7. So, uh, let us see whether it is hazardous or not. Okay. So, let us go back and check whether it is hazardous or not see, see here. So, the 7 so, SAR is 7, so that means we are here, okay, this is 7 and then uh, this is less than 1.9, okay, less than 1.9 this one. So, definitely, so this is a non-hazardous condition, okay, so 1.9 because this is, uh, uh, this is 2, almost uh, 2, right, so and this is a non-hazardous condition. So, salinity management options, if you see the salinity management options, the first one is uh, remove surface salts. So, if you, if you see you know uh, the white scum or white layer on top of the uh, soil. So, one uh, practice is just to remove or scrap away the uh, salts from the surface or, and also or you can also surface flushing. So, use uh, high Z uh, water to remove the uh, you know you flush this salts on surface and the control the saline water. So, for this uh, remove surface water by drainage. So, simple is if you have a lot of you know salts present on the uh, surface you can use uh, drainage system to remove the salts from there. And then there are engineering practices like leaching as we studied earlier the leaching fraction and other things and also drainage we are going to uh, study this drainage uh, exclusively from the next lecture. And uh, the artificial recharge of rainwater to aquifer through recharge wells. You can also use recharge wells to remove uh, the salts and irrigation and uh, water management practice. So, this is on site uh, management. If you have a lot of salts in the irrigation water, uh, better you know uh, take care of uh, removing a, a, either treating the water right or, or you can uh, go for you know the crop management. So, you, you can use the crops which are susceptible or tolerant to the particular uh, irrigation uh, salinity levels. So, engineering practices if you see the leaching, so the mostly it consists of applying enough good quality water thoroughly leach excess salts from the soil. It can be done two ways, so leaching requirement uh, method or leaching plus artificial drainage. So, leaching requirements the salts can be moved below the root zone by applying more water than the plant needs. So, that is what we uh, uh, estimated previously, right. So, the leachate requirement is extra water, uh, uh, I mean extra water needed to leach the salts. So, that is leachate requirement and leachate plus artificial drainage. So, what happens in some cases if you have the root zone which is uh, uh, very nearer shallow, right. So, even if you add more water on top of the soil, so because it, it cannot you know uh, flush the soil salts because of the uh, clay layer top in, in the bottom. So, there you have to use uh, in order to uh, remove the salts in addition to the leachate you also use artificial drainage to remove the uh, extra salts from the root zone. And the next is the drainage, so drainage the system to provide where the sub, uh, subsoil are not permeable. So, here if subsoil is not uh, permeable right. Uh, so, then definitely you will go into use otherwise the amount of water which is uh, pouring on top will cause water logging. So, we will talk about this drainage in the next lecture uh, and uh, following weeks exclusively. So, it could be surface drainage right. So, in uh, I mean making ditches on the surface and uh, removing the extra water from the surface and subsurface drainage 
So, this if you have both surface as well as uh, water from the root zone uh, you want to remove and you can use subsurface drainage by uh, providing deep ditches or tiles. And the mold drainage suppose in some cases the clay soils are you know uh, uh, causes lot of water ponding or water logging conditions. So, so there uh, in ordinary uh, you know uh, machineries cannot you know, be used to in order to make ditches. So, that is why there is a mold drainage the molds or a kind of a mold plow will be used to remove the shallow channels and through that uh, the water will be uh, you know removed. Okay. So, then the vertical drainage the vertical drainage is uh, kind of uh, you know removing water vertically through uh, tube wells. Okay, so, then then the other one is the artificial recharge or excess rainfall aquifer through recharge well. So, if you see the recharge well, so uh, this is the uh, recharge well and here this is the perforations uh, to the uh, well, okay, this is the pipe and on top suppose this is a recharge pit, this is a pit. Okay. So, this is in such a way that the coarse sand, gravel, pebbles or the things. So, water will be uh, entering to this and finally, to the perforations it will be going into the uh, soil and the rest is some of the extra water can also penetrate through this one okay. and uh, that is the clean water again. So, this way, so the salinity uh, of the aquifer will uh, lower due to dilution and become with the acceptance uh, range. Suppose, you add uh, a good water on top, so that uh, will dilute the uh, salts present in the uh, soil okay. and the shallow depth recharge structures with tube wells are often better choice than the surface storage in flat topography with uh, good aquifer properties. So, suppose the aquifer is good properties right in the flat lands, so the better use vertical you know uh, I mean uh, tube wells. So, the tube wells can be a better choice uh, because that can even collect uh, you know more water uh, I mean you, you can dis, uh, recharge more water through the tube wells. Okay, so, this is all about this in the lecture. So, mostly we focused in this on um, overall salinity and then uh, the sodic uh, uh, soils or uh, sodicity you can say. The sodicity <coughs> means containing more uh, sodium ions compared to other salts. So, the mostly the salts we are talking about the so including sodium right uh, magnesium uh, and also the potassium. So, all other salts right and calcium other salts. So, that is the overall salts uh, content present in the soil. Okay. So, now uh, generally sodicity is you know measured with SAR sodium adsorption ratio. Okay. So, then uh, so you uh, knowing the sodium adsorption ratio and uh, overall salinity. So, you can you can uh, uh, find out whether that particular condition is uh, hazardous for the crop or not. Okay. Yeah. So, th thank you.